Mark, the guitar guy here to teach you some amazing stuff that maybe you didn't possibly know before, but now you're about to know about. So, students ask me all the time, am I um, learning too much? Or what should I be learning? Or the, my, someone said to me this, someone said to me that, uh, a friend of mine said I should be doing this. I shouldn't play this chord this way. This is not the right way to play the chord. This chord's actually called this. Uh, this is how I should hold a pick chord into someone else. I watched a video and it said this. There's so much information out there and, and that can be an issue. So we get overwhelmed because we think, well, I don't know which one's the right, which one's the right information, which one's the correct one. So we get overwhelmed and there's just too much information out there and we get uh, confusion. And when confusion happens there and there's doubt, we tend to do either nothing and procrastinate or we worriedly go down a direction where we think, this is, I'm not sure if this is correct. Um, and I'm just here to tell you that there's many, many ways of learning guitar, okay? There's many, many things that people need to um, that can get told. Now, the amount of teachers out there, and this really frustrates me, they just say, this is the way. And I'm probably guilty of this. Oops, my phone. I'm probably guilty of doing this um, to a degree, especially on certain things I know I'm a bit of an expert on when it comes to holding a pick, strumming, um, rhythm, rhythm related things I'm actually pretty good at. But in a few other techniques I've kind of honed myself just because I know they work but there's no real right and wrong but do I'm going to tell you some stuff that actually is really important for guitar players that will help you hopefully if you're playing guitar that's good so if even if you think you're playing wrong you're playing guitar so you're going to be getting better there might be a technique you're doing that's not ideal that might be adjusted at some stage don't worry about that because that's only one aspect of guitar playing. Guitar playing is many, many things. There's what's happening in your brain, in your ear, and in your fingers, and your feeling. That might be just one little thing, like slightly how you're holding a pick differently. And the adjustment part of it, if you were to adjust it, let's say you were playing for a year and you had this one technique that wasn't quite right, this aspect of your playing that's not quite right. It's easy to adjust that. You know, you can fix that in a week, really. If you if you practice, you can fix that in a week. So. Why would you give up a whole year of playing guitar because you're not quite sure that that technique's not right, as an example. So that's one aspect. The other thing is um, some people think now I should just focus on this one type of playing. So for example, um, it could be, I'll give an example just to use a band. Let's say you're playing old classic stuff and you're just le you're learning, say it's the Eagles and you're learning some classic Eagles songs and all you've been doing is strumming Eagles songs. Now, I would suggest and rather that you don't just strum so that you have um, pieces of guitar styles. Now, I would suggest and rather that you don't just strum so that you have um, pieces of guitar styles that you are learning. Now that makes people think, hang on, I want to get really good at this style. If I'm doing this thing off to the side, maybe I'm doing a bit of finger style off to the side. I'm like learning how to do, why am I learning this stuff? This is not helping. Well, it actually, it actually is. This, the, the saying that I use is the rising tide lifts all ships. The rising tide lifts all ships. I can't speak properly this morning. It sounds hard. So by that is there's all these ships on the, on the tide. And when the tide goes up, every ship goes up. It's not like some are left behind. That's how I feel about guitar playing. The rising tide is guitar playing, okay? So if you're playing, you're jamming with some friends and playing songs you already know. You're not necessarily challenging yourself, but you're just playing a lot. That's going to make you better. And it's not just going to get, make you better at the stuff you were doing there. The coolest thing ever is when I, I, we go from, let's say we give that example, we go from strumming the guitar and learning a strumming song, and then we learn a fingerstyle song, which is a totally different thing. And, and the student works on that fingerstyle thing all week leaving completely aside the stuff they did earlier. And when I say, let's try that strumming thing we did the next time we see them from earlier, they're thinking, oh my God, I've not even touched this since last time. The, I guarantee, and it happens every time, they go and strum it. Then when they left it, even though they haven't practiced it. So part of your brain goes, maybe I should not practice anything at all because it seems to get better when I leave it alone. That's not exactly what's happening. So what's happening is you're doing another discipline you're still getting better at guitar. You're, the connections are going on in all, every way to a higher degree. So when you jump over and actually play this style that you struggled with before, it's better. So that's happened all the time. And I love, I love, love, love when people get that. They go, ah, I just have to play. 
doesn't matter what I'm playing. So there's another thing that can stop confusion out there for you guys. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what you're playing. Um, it doesn't matter that you, you could be playing a classical piece and working on that all week. If you're playing guitar, you're getting better at guitar overall. You know, you, just because you're not focusing on another technique. So I find it cool to be able to actually go maybe three different ways of playing guitar is a really good way of doing it, just to throw a number out there. So um, for example, we might be doing some strumming stuff and I'll look at all the stuff, I'll look at the holistic picture of a, of a student and think, right, we've been learning, we'll go back to that example of the Eagles again. You've been learning the Eagles um, sort of catalog because you love the Eagles. And there's people out there going, who's the Eagles? Sorry guys, you look it up. <laughs> so you've got the Eagles stuff and you've learned like four Eagles songs and they're like cool strumming songs and they've got lovely chords and they're sounding kind of cool. I usually, even, even by the third Eagle song, I'm usually moving on to something else, and it's not necessarily not the Eagles, but it's a different aspect of playing. It's not just strumming. I might go, let's learn a little riff within a song. I might go, well, if you like Eagles, you might like Pink Floyd, and we learn Wish You Were Here, which has got some picking and some strumming combined, and it's using chord shapes, but it's quite simple. I start simple, yet we have to pick, so we have to anchor the finger. There's all these different techniques we have to do now because I've got to hone in on one string and pick that note and get a solid sound and da da da. And then, so then you've got strumming, we've got picking, because all songs are strumming and picking, or finger style, pretty much. So that's two aspects. You can already hear where I'm gonna go next, and that's finger style, and you go, well, you don't just play with a guitar pick, we can do stuff with fingers as well. But you took all about guitar picking and holding a pick correctly. Yes, I, I'm big on that. But fingers, we've got finger style as well. I'm not gonna ignore that. It's not a team one against the other. It's like all of it is cool. So we go finger style as well. We learn how to do some finger style stuff. We learn a basic finger style song. So we get the technique going. Then we've got three techniques all simmering away and growing together. And you're a more complete guitar player. Plus, it's just more fun. You've got all this variety to practice when you sit down, and you can go, oh, I'm like working my finger style stuff today. Um, so hopefully that helps. Confusion is the, is the killer, really, of guitar playing. So I'd like to help people sort of be clear up with that sort of stuff, because this is one of the biggest questions that people come to me with. Um, am I playing the right stuff? Should I be playing this? There's so many things out there. One more thing. Uh, so the, when people say, I was told this, or my friend plays and he says, don't ever play G that way. Or if you play C this way, um, it's not really a C, it's technically a C. These sorts of things are said all the time. And for some reason, us musicians, we want to sound superior because we know more than that person and we want to help them. That's the main reason they're saying this stuff to you because they think they're helping you. Uh, but really that is creating doubt and confusion. And they, they also don't like even nothing's cut and dry in music it's really not it's there's on the guitar there's like so many ways of playing a c chord and each one of them is a c chord or they're a family of the c chord but it's not about that it's it's there's so many ways to do this as i bang the table in the camera so try not to get too flustered when someone tries to help you because they will and they'll they'll also put doubt in your mind that your teacher's taking you in the wrong direction teacher may be taking you in the wrong direction but you have to look at the person who's telling you the information and go are they amazing and are they better than the person that's teaching me now and if not maybe i shouldn't be listening to them or i should go and find out a little bit more information so um or at least try their idea and see if it works because it could work it could just work for you so hopefully that helps clear it up a bit of a ramble there but hopefully that helps with confusion i Look forward to seeing you again soon. If you're having confusion and you want my advice and help, I suggest you go and to my Facebook page, click on the Book Now button and see if you can book a time with me so we can do a Skype lesson no matter where you are in the world. They are amazing. The Skype lessons are awesome. Not just because I'm doing it, but uh, they are so successful and so easy for me to do. I can diagnose, which is my favorite thing, to diagnose um, an issue that you may be struggling with in an uh, identify a point in your playing that definitely needs to um, be focused on and I'm very very good at finding the thing the one thing that we can do in that one day that will transform you as a guitar player it's, and sometimes it's not what you think it is so that's my that's actually my main skill as a guitar teacher I'm able to look at the holistic view I'm not going to make you a guitar player that plays like this 
Um, that's not my goal because, it, or it makes me play like makes you play like me necessarily, which is a lot a lot of teachers do out there. They they spit out carbon copies of themselves. I would rather look at what you're into and go, well, if you're into this, let's go over here and let's do this. In fact, you need to focus on this and this. I think this thing here is going to make a big difference to your playing. Um, so that's how I like to do things. I love to find that thing out, that one thing that just makes you go from here to here really quickly. And uh, yeah, that's been really successful. So I've got some a bunch of students all around the world. I'd love you to be one of them if that's what you're thinking. Uh, it's not, not as expensive as you would think. Some people think, oh, you're on YouTube and I've been watching you for a while. It's going to be really expensive. Just check it out and uh, I can let you know how much it's going to be. You could even have a free lesson at the beginning if it's still available. Hopefully that helps. Go and check out all my things. There's lots of things coming out on Instagram and my Patreon, but I'll catch up with you guys next time.